the book of Proverbs. Last week we studied about uh, circumstances not being what we may consider to be happy in that there being a benefit in that when we studied uh, Proverbs 3, 11 and 12 that says, My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof for whom the Lord loves he reproves even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. So we can face difficult circumstances in our lives, uh, but that doesn't mean that, that God hates us or that God is punishing us necessarily. Uh, many times he is uh, correcting us as we correct our, the children whom we love. And so today we will continue our study of Proverbs chapter 3 in this section that is uh, really one of the most remarkable parts of the whole Bible, I think, that uh, as far as sanctification goes and how to live for the Lord, we've seen that there are essentially this chapter 3 can be broken into 10 sections that, that give us 10 keys to contentment or 10 keys to living for the Lord. And today, we will see one of those keys is to seek wisdom and knowledge as we give a kind of a brief overview of verses 13 uh, through 21 this morning. So in these 10 keys we've seen about, uh, we've talked about internalizing God's Word, making it a part of who we are, uh, that's necessary for us. I mean, we have in the 21st century very easy access to the Bible. Most of us probably have one, a copy of the Bible on our phone that we can easily get to, uh, these kinds of things. But, you know, there, might, there are a lot of times in life where things happen and you don't have the ability to immediately go to the Bible or you may not remember a particular passage that has to do with what you're facing. And that's why it's a good idea to memorize the Bible. When you face temptation, you can uh, realize that there's no temptation that, that, uh, that's overtaking you right now that other people haven't faced. And, and as a matter of fact, God is making a way for you to be able to bear it. That's internalizing God's Word and then being able to apply it to the situations of life. This is something that we, that we have to do to live for the Lord. Uh, we have to trust in the Lord. We have to have no confidence in ourselves. We ought to be honoring the Lord with our money. And again, last time, we looked at growing in the struggle, dealing with discipline, dealing with difficult circumstances in Life And today we see another key, which is to seek wisdom and knowledge. Notice Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 13. It says, How blessed is the man who finds wisdom, and the man who gains understanding, for her profit is better than the profit of silver, and her gain better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire compares with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who hold her fast. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the deeps were broken up, and the skies drip with dew. My son, let them not vanish from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and discretion so they will be life to your soul and adornment to your neck. Seeking wisdom and knowledge. This is something that, that right along with and go, goes hand in hand with uh, internalizing God's Word. God's Word is where we find uh, knowledge. God's Word is where we find the truth, and then when we apply it to our lives, that's when we're 
we are living wisely. And according to this passage and many, many others in the Bible, there is a blessing that is involved in that. And we're going to see another blessing in our uh, service, or in our study of Revelation this morning. But the, it's obviously a different word in uh, the Greek than it is in the Hebrew. In Hebrew, it's ishiri, is the, the, the term that is translated as blessed here or blessing. And this is a theme that is prominent also, not just in the Proverbs, but in the Psalms as well. And as we study this passage in Proverbs, we see the, relation, the relationship between what we also find in the Psalms. And many, if not most of these Psalms that I, that I have reference to here were written by David. David wrote the Psalms, and he and Solomon, it would appear, is the one who's learning the lesson and then passing it on to his uh, sons. Psalm uh, chapter 1, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Right at the very beginning of the Psalms, David is laying the foundation for a solid life living for the Lord. And, he's, and he is addressing the same issue here, seeking wisdom and knowledge. Uh, going to the correct source for wisdom and knowledge. The Psalms begin with, don't go to the wicked for uh, wisdom and knowledge. Instead, it's going to be go to the Lord. Psalm 2.12, do homage to the Son that he may not become angry and you perish in the way for his wrath may soon be kindled. How blessed are all who take refuge in him. That, of course, is a psalm speaking uh, towards the end times and is directly addressing, again, what we're studying in Revelation and the second coming of Christ. We need to be putting our refuge in the Lord, and as a result of that, we will be blessed. Psalm 32, 1, how blessed is he who tra whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Somebody whose uh, transgression is forgiven and sin is covered is a person who is uh, living wisely. They've sought knowledge, sought knowledge about how to deal with their sin, and then acted wisely in applying that truth to their life. They're seeking wisdom and knowledge in order to have their sins forgiven. There's a great blessing in that. Psalm 34, 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. David uh, makes a, a point of that over and over and over in the Psalms, speaking of the great blessing that there is in taking refuge in the Lord. Psalm 94, 12, Blessed is the man whom you chasten, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law. That, again, every one of these psalms pertaining right to the very things that we're studying in Proverbs, uh, that fits right with our lesson last time, how blessed is the man whom you chasten, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law. Getting taught out of the law is seeking wisdom and knowledge. And oh, by the way, the Lord made reference to this. He is a, a descendant of David as well, and uh, therefore also a descendant of Solomon. And he said, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, 33 and 34, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of its, for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Isn't that the truth? Uh, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, and these kinds of things. Don't make that the focus of your life. Instead, seek first his kingdom 
and his righteousness. That's seeking wisdom and knowledge. The very same lesson that Solomon is uh, giving to us as well. And again, this doesn't necessarily mean this blessing that there is for uh, seeking wisdom and knowledge doesn't necessarily mean that circumstances are going to be great from a worldly perspective. But it does mean happiness and good circumstances from a godly perspective. There is great joy in following the Lord. There is freedom from sin and its consequences. For one thing, that you, you'll have better relationships. Uh, you'll have a secure eternity to, <laughs> to always fall back on. Uh, and all of the many other benefits that there are from seeking wisdom and knowledge and living for the Lord. If you'll remember our definition for uh, wisdom, wisdom isn't just having the knowledge, it's applying the knowledge to your life. And here's our quote from Roy Zook that we haven't seen in a while. It's, he says, wisdom means being skillful and successful in one's relationships and responsibilities, observing and following the Creator's principles of order in the moral universe. That is wisdom. That's what Solomon is here saying that is a key principle to living for the Lord. And there's going to be great blessing in it when you find wisdom and gain understanding. In order to find wisdom, you have to be looking for it. And the fear of the Lord is the very foundation of that, is the foundation of knowledge. Knowledge is the basis of, or the fear of the Lord is the basis of having knowledge. Having knowledge is the basis of living wisely, applying knowledge to the various uh, situations of life. You know, we could have the entire book of Proverbs memorized. We could have the whole Bible memorized. In fact, there are a, a whole host of unbelieving Jewish people who have the entirety of the Old Testament memorized. Uh, but at the same time, they think de uh, Jesus is demon possessed and they're complete unbelievers in Jesus as their Messiah. That's not living wisely, that's having all the knowledge but not living wisely, not applying the truth of the Scriptures to life situations. And so, uh, so we have wisdom and knowledge, or wisdom and understanding here. Understanding is just kind of uh, cleverness or skill, uh, skill in living, just like Dr. Zook says here, wisdom means being skillful and successful in one's relationships and responsibilities. And you have to have that foundation of the fear of the Lord, uh, having the Bible inculcate your mind and your, your thinking in order to, to be able to do these, uh, to live in a way that is wise. And there is great benefit in doing that. In fact, the benefit outweighs even uh, material wealth is what Solomon is uh, getting at here by saying things like the, uh, verse 14, the prophet is better than the prophet of silver and her gain better than fine gold. She's more precious than jewels and nothing you desire compares with her. Uh, and Solomon is a person who is very familiar with material Wealth. In fact, he was probably the wealthiest, if uh, uh, a very wealthy person, if not the wealthiest person who lived on the earth at this particular time. But the prophet of trusting in the Lord and seeking him is greater than material wealth. And, and a good example of this is kind of is a, a house. You can have a multi-million dollar house on a ranch in uh, Montana or wherever that may be uh, with all the latest 
uh, fixtures and amenities. I was actually in Bozeman, Montana. That's what brought this uh, thought to my mind this past week. I was in Bozeman, walked around the town. It's pretty nice, nice little town. Uh, and they have real estate offices like most towns do all over the place and uh, listings in the windows. Oh, that's interesting. Let's look at this. And yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, about the average price that they had listed was around, oh, the lowest price actually was $750,000 for a 1,500, 2,000 square foot house. And in the picture of the house that you're buying for three quarters of a million dollars, you can see the three other neighbors in the picture. So, wow. Wow. And then they did have one that was on a ranch as well. That was about three and a half million. It was beautiful. And that is uh, uh, material wealth in a house. And, but if the people inside the house, the three and a half million dollars house, are not living wisely, then the home is miserable. But if you're living in a tent on in the wilderness and you're living wisely with your uh whoever you're living with then you can have a home there you could have a home out of sticks and branches that you built yourself if the people are living wisely and it can be enjoyable whereas uh the others in the million dollar mansions are actually miserable in their beautiful house uh, Proverbs 21.9 says, It is better to live in the corner of a roof than in a house shared with a contentious woman. And this is, Im this is implying that the woman is living in a way that is not wise, as it is saying here. It doesn't mean that all women are like that. Obviously, that isn't, isn't the case. But she's creating an environment that isn't a home, that isn't a, a pleasant place. Place and so there is there's no benefit there. Uh, that's why Solomon is saying there is better benefit in living wisely and seeking wisdom and understanding, wisdom and knowledge, applying these things to our lives. Uh, there's more benefit in that than having all the material wealth in the world. And notice here in verse 16, he says, long, long life is in her right hand. Uh, in her left hand are riches and honor. Uh, her ways are pleasant ways. All her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who hold her fast. Remember that Solomon is writing to the nation of Israel when he specifically mentions long life, uh, riches, honor, peace, all of these things. Remember, God made many, many promises to the nation of Israel that if they would live according to his word, he would bless them. And they would be able to live in the land, live in the land securely and have incredible abundance. Uh, and so Solomon here is reiterating those truths to his audience. Uh, there are also, of course, secondary applications to us. Uh, we, as we live uh, in accordance with God's word, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to live forever, but make no mistake that there are sinful activities that, that you can engage in that will end your life sooner uh, rather than later. Uh, you can engage in sinful activities where you lose a lot of money, like taking drugs, uh, gambling away all your money, you know, whatever the, the vice is, many of them cost money. You can lose honor by committing various sins. And so, of course, there is an incredible uh, secondary application to us as well. Just, keeping, just keep in mind, yeah, you don't have a promise of long life. The Israelites could have a promise of a longer life because if they obeyed, then uh, the Babylonians aren't going to come and kill all of you. <laughs> kind of uh, real life for the Israelites. Uh, and there is a basis for this. This isn't just an empty promise that Solomon is making here. 
that the Lord is making to us through Solomon. There's a, there's a reason why we can trust this. And that begins in verse 19. The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. By understanding, He established the heavens. So we ought to be trusting in the Creator's wisdom. In wisdom, God created everything that we see. Uh, we live in a world of perfect order in the creation anyway, as far as the stars, the sun, the moon, all of these kinds of things. It is, it is created in such perfect order that we can send people to the moon because uh, scientists know where the moon is going to be on a particular day and they can send a rocket there. We can send people to Mars and these kinds of things. Or, uh, well, we haven't sent people there yet. It's definitely uh, the plan of scientists, but we can send rovers there because we know exactly where Mars is going to be three months from now or however long it takes for things to get there because the world has been created in perfect order. People have been navigating by the stars uh, since the beginning of time. You can go out and look to the north and find the north star. It's there every night, and you can see it and be directed by that. That's the incredible wisdom that God used to create this world. We can trust in that. That is the basis for why we ought to be seeking His wisdom. We also ought to trust in the one who judges. Notice it says there, uh, where does it say? By his knowledge, the deeps were broken up and the skies drip with dew. That sounds kind of nice, uh, poetic language there that the deeps were broken up. Well, when were the deeps broken up? <laughs> the deeps were broken up in judgment in the beginning sections of Genesis, when uh, the people were in complete rebellion to God, doing whatever they thought was right in their own eyes, and he judged them by breaking up the deep. We ought to <laughs> trust in the one who is able to judge. He, and his judgments are true and correct and right at all, at all times. So we ought to be seeking wisdom and knowledge so as to not violate his principles and the result is uh, eternal life and reward when we do this. Uh, as it says there, so they will be life to your soul and adornment to your neck. The ultimate knowledge is that God will save you from your sins if you will trust in Him. And when you do that, that leads to eternal life, and great reward that, coincidentally enough, we will be studying during uh, the service as well. So there is, there is a great blessing. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. There is great blessing for you in your life if you will simply seek after the Lord Seek after his wisdom, after his knowledge, the truth of his word, and apply it to your life. It will have a long-lasting benefit for you, and we can trust in it because it comes from the Lord himself. Let's go to him in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the book of Proverbs and the truths that we find there. We thank you for the fact that your word is truth and that we are sanctified in the truth, just as the Lord prayed uh, in John chapter 17. I just pray that we would be people of your word, not just for academic purposes, uh, so we can impress our friends with our uh, spirituality and these kinds of things. No, rather so that we would have a relationship with you that is more meaningful and more complete, and therefore we are uh, the kind of people that you want us to be. I just pray that you would guide us in that, that you would watch over us, protect us from the sin that so easily besets us, help us to cast those things away and put our focus on you and your word, and we just pray for your will to be done in that. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.